I tie my laces and walk adjacent to father's patience. Right next to Satan, the sin lies that come me raiment. Can't grow complacent, my heart is racing, the Lord is waiting. I follow in his footsteps, it's not complicated. I've been living in this hell, so I gotta make it. This could be my only chance, so I gotta take it. So I gotta take it. Brothers been tripping for too long So I've been walking face up Through the mud with my boots on And I'll be damned if I do wrong I just hate when the news on Cause all I'm seeing is depression And oppression all up in their face And they wanna give up on a day by day Just know the Lord, he is making a way So if you keep in the faith Hold your head high, it's gonna be okay And I don't even feel no more My people getting killed It's getting really real And they don't wanna live on oh, no No, no it's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block Why sisters always gotta cry on the block And why we feel the pain We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. I stream on my pros to be better than me. Truth Be Told. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. This is what we must do to avoid and be. Truth Be Told. Truth Be Told. And blacks and Hispanics are family. Truth Be Told. Truth be told, I just pray you see Christ when you see me. Truth be told, truth be told. These men spoke wisdom because they understood the scriptures. Scriptures, a lot of people in that stronghold, and again, that's why our communities are in the shape that they're in because of sin. Yeah, when we bring out Christ, black people say color don't matter, but yet they ride into the movie theaters on elephants with kente claws because of a black superhero. But the color of Christ don't matter. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That hidden ones because our people don't know that we're the Israelites according to the Bible. Shalom, fam. Welcome back to Truth Be Told, D.C. I'm Officer Matthew to my left. Officer Phineas. Officer Mendel. To my right. Officer Micah. So today's topic is the Semites versus the synagogue of Satan. So before we get into it, let's open up with John 832. This is the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know... Then, 
And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth is, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans make up the 12 tribes of Israel, and you're called to repentance in these last days. So we're going to get into the truth of the matter. So let's go ahead and open up with the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary and look up Ham. So we're going to get right into it. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, uh -huh. born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of, Meaning father. of the dark races, Okay, not the Negroes. Not who? Not the Negroes. But who? But the Egyptians. Africans. Ethiopians. More Africans. Libyans. Some more Africans. And Canaanites. And even more Africans. So it said, out of the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, Ham is the youngest son of Noah, and he was... The father of the dark races, not the Negro. So the, the question is, who the hell is the Negro? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and open up with Genesis 42 because we're going to deal with, the, with color in the Bible. Because, again, we're doing the Semites versus the synagogue of Satan. So we're doing the real versus the fake. So let's go ahead and get into it. The book of Genesis chapter 42 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, and he knew them, mm -hmm. but made himself strange unto them. So Joseph... His brothers couldn't recognize what he looked like. Let's keep reading. And spake roughly unto them. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan. From the land of what? Canaan. That was one of Ham's son, one of the dark races. Read. To buy food. Okay, let's jump down. Let's get, uh, get verse 8. Get verse 8. And, and Joseph knew his brethren, uh -huh. but they knew him not. Right, because he looked like everybody else in the land. Read, now we in Egypt. Remember, that was another son of, uh, or another descendant of uh, uh, Ham. Verse 23. Uh huh. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. Uh huh. For he spake unto them by an interpreter. Right, so he's speaking whatever the Egyptian tongue was at the time. They didn't recognize their own brother. So Joseph, if you pull up the pictures of Joseph, he was an Edomite in a land of Canaan. His brothers come from Canaan and Egypt. He wouldn't have looked like what we just pulled out the Bible dictionary. They would have spotted him off the break. Yeah, I was going to say, because the heavy part is you read the definition of Ham, and it says he's the, the forefather of the dark nations, um, which included the Egyptians. So exactly. that's letting you know right there that uh, in order for Joseph to blend in, he had to look like the Egyptians. That's the whole point. They didn't recognize him. They, they would have been, it would have been easy to spot Jimmy Swagger in there playing Joseph, so you understand, in, in Egypt during that time. The book of Exodus, chapter 2 and verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away. Uh huh. But Moses stood up and helped them. So Moses stood up for the sisters, read. And watered their flock. And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? So Palms was like, man, how y'all get back so soon? Normally y'all get back at 5.30. How y'all back here at, at 1 o'clock? Y'all ain't do your job. Let's see what they said. And they said, an Egyptian. A what? An Egyptian. Again, we read that out of the uh, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. One of the descendants of the dark races from Ham. Read. Delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Uh-huh. And also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Wow. So let's go on to Acts. Let's go to Acts. Let's deal with Apostle Paul. Let's see what they said about our forefather, Apostle Paul. Because if you just Google Joseph, uh, Moses, Paul, and just hit, hit that in Google and hit images. Matter of fact, pull, hit, type in Apostle Paul and click images for the people. Because a lot of times people tune in these shows and think we're just making up stuff. So go ahead and click on that and click on uh, images, and let's see what pop up when we type in Apostle Paul. Let's see what come up. Go ahead and get it on the screen. Y'all don't need to have us on the screen. Go ahead and get that. Oh, my God. That, wow. Get that one over the book, I guess, right in the letter. Uh, to the left. I want the one to the left. Looking like Socrates down. Look at that. What the hell is that? Come on, man. Go ahead and read that. The book of Acts, chapter 21, and verse 37. So we in Acts 21. So let's read along. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, mm -hmm. he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Mm. Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? You know, like today, you see a brother, he go to a different country, he, he speaking Greek or whatever. They go, hold up, this brother speaking Greek? They, they be shocked. They already record that already throwing you off the trail right off the bat. Because if he looked like that dude up there reading a book, a Greek, why would they be surprised he was talking Greek? 
Read. Verse 38. Art not thou that Egyptian? Art thou what? Thou that Egyptian. Again, one of the descendants of Ham, man. Read on. Which before these days made us an uproar mm -hmm. and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. Mm. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. Hold up, what? I am a man which am a Jew so of Tarsus. They mistake them for an Egyptian. Paul said, huh, I'm a Jew. Fried him up, read. A city in Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city. I mean, Paul wasn't no bum, so you understand. Like, they see them stupid pictures up there. Pull them images back up of these dusty Edomites. Uh, uh, look at that. That dude looking like he's straight out of the garbage can, man. You know what? That dude right there with the, uh, with oh, the Bible right there, the one that's right there. He looked like one of them dudes coming from a bar mitzvah or something. One exactly. Fake, one now, we got him ones. on video. Don't worry about that. So let's let's keep it moving. Let's go to let's go to another forefather. Let's go to Songs of Solomon. We're gonna start at one. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter one and verse one. Uh huh. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. So these are Solomon's songs that he wrote. Read verse five. Uh huh. I am black. What? I am black. Uh huh. But comely. King Solomon said, "I'm black and handsome." Pull up King Solomon for the people. Let's see. We just gonna type type it in. Wow! Look at that. Bruh. Right under images. Jesus, they didn't recycle Caesar Borgia right there. All right. Like they, this, they just got this generic face for everybody. That was the same picture as Apostle Paul. They just made his hair bald and gave him a bigger, grayer beard, man. Look at that one on the bottom left was the worst. Hold on, where you at? I'll go down. Let right, yep, right there. Damn. Read that again for the people. I am black, but comely. King Solomon said I'm black and handsome. I don't see one brother up there in them images. Damn. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. As the tents of Kedar. Just in case they think it's a scam, type in tents of Kedar. Leave it live up on the screen. No, put it back on the screen. Because somebody think we'll be out here doing editing. Look at, the, click, look at that image right there. Look at that Them thing is made out of black goat's hair, man. Click on that one to the left. Look at that thing. Black is, read that again for the people. I am black, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, of verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black, but comely. Read. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. Oh, it officer, you want to say something on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, get, get, um, hold that, hold that, officer. Get up First Maccabees 3 and 48. Because what officer's doing is showing a bunch of imageries uh -huh. of the apostles in the world. So now, if they weren't black originally, this verse... Wouldn't make sense. Because now the imagery that's pushed out in the earth is all of the apostles, all the Jews are white people. Read. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. See that thing? So the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their imagery in our Bible which they have done and have pushed it across the earth. That's why when we pull things up, you see that on the imagery now. Right. I mean, flat out lies. The scripture is saying I'm black and handsome. You type in King Solomon and hit images. It's a it's an old white dude. Come on, man. So the Semites versus the synagogue say, do you already see who at work? Like Paul said, the mystery of iniquity doth already work, man. Right there in Google Images, the mystery of iniquity working. Let's go to, uh, let's run this video, this uh, Unwelcome Home. claims to fame beyond lending its name to a nearby nuclear reactor that some allege is part of a secret weapons program. But now Damona is back in the news. It's home to a community that calls itself the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. Now this is a group of African Americans who believe that they are the descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel, in their case Judah, and they see Israel as their spiritual homeland. We feel that this is our legitimate ancient 
homeland, ancestral homeland. We can document these things culturally, historically. We can document the fact that, that many of us are actually genetically, culturally, historically connected to this land. We answered this call. We want to be part of this light that prophetically was to go forth in these very dark times on the planet. And we know that we have that contribution to make. And we've made that contribution for 50 plus years here in Israel. And we're known, we're known uh, amongst the people. And uh, these are part of our family members who over the last 25 years have become deeply intertwined with us. This African-American expat community, the largest in the world, has lived here for just over half a century. But now roughly 100 of them are facing imminent deportation. Israel's interior ministry says they're in the country illegally and has rejected their requests for residency. We had about two dozen of our, of our family members, friends, associates here who received letters of deportation, intent to deport. And these were cases that had been in limbo for the last two decades, two and a half decades in some cases. And so they were given, to our great surprise, they were given a 60-day notice, 21 days to appeal. Uh, deportation notices. Certainly outside observers have acknowledged the fact that racism is an element within the, uh, st the uh, structure of the Ministry of Interior. Dawn now has just 60 days to get out of the country, a place she's called home for decades. Her children, all of whom were born in Israel, also face imminent deportation. It's very disturbing to me uh, to think that my children will be deported from the land of their birth. They've never lived anywhere else. Uh, this is the life that they know, and as an adult, this is the life that I know. I've spent most of my adulthood here in Israel. I'm surprised because our community uh, has been here for 53 years. We have been a very vital part of the Israeli society. Our children serve in the IDF. Any aspect of the Israeli society, we're a part of. Others feel they're living in Israel on borrowed time. Their tourist visas expired years ago. All of us have some degree of issue with the Ministry of Interior in terms of uh, taking some unusually long time to get what you would expect to do to you in, in three years, four years, four months. It's always something. Uh, the difference is that some of us are already in the system and are moving at least, uh, we thought, in a uh, positive direction. The Ministry of Interior, especially under the, uh, the dominion of the Orthodox parties, has always seen us as other something other than. We're not seen as Jews. We're, it's always something else. We're outside of the law and we're unincorporable into the family of the houses of Israel. And we know that there are many different diverg uh, versions of Judaism, many different uh, communities with different histori and historical and cultural differences that find a way to get along. How come we can't fit? We're committed to this land. We've committed ourselves, our futures, our children. 100% of our children, when they graduate high school, they serve in the IDF. We've represented Israel in academic, in sports, in cultural events around this world. The community has come a long way in the 53 years since a former factory worker from Chicago arrived here with some 30 of his followers. Devoted and committed to Israel, they practice all Jewish holidays and festivals, eat vegan and practice polygamy. Although it's only a small percentage of the community that faces deportation, everyone here is upset and has vowed to stay put. Paul Islia, RT, Demona. Yeah, that thing right there, that thing is some vicious stuff, man. Let's get on. Let's get Micah chapter 2, man. Let's get the book of Micah chapter 2. Because we're about to see something here. Is this, you know, you got to get a visa to live back in your homeland. Understand what's going on here. The Lord is, is going to be hitting the eject button on that madness over there right now. You best believe that. That controversy is going to come to an end. Thus saith the Lord. Let's go ahead and read that. The book of Micah chapter 2 on verse 1. Uh -huh. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Mm. And work evil upon their beds. So that whole plan about them perpetrating themselves as the Jews was an evil work upon their bed. All of us have pulled that out in First Maccabees three forty eight when they laid open our records and started painting themselves in. This was that was during the time of the Greeks. Understand they've been covered in that land ever since. Read. When the morning is light, they practice it. Uh huh. Because it is in the power of their hand. Right. That's why they stood up in our stead, because it was in the power of their hand. Read. And they covet fields. They do what? Covet fields. They always had their eye on our land. Read. And take them by violence. No, they vote. And take them by violence. Uh-huh. And houses. And houses. And take them away. Uh-huh. So they oppress a man mm. and his house. Mm. 
even a man and his heritage. They oppressed a man and his heritage. Get to Rock 17 and 11 real quick. Watch this. Because they sitting around there, they telling them, y'all ain't the real Jews, this, that. And they don't have no proof of any times to that land historically. None of their rabbis can stand up and say they actually fit what we read in Deuteronomy 28. And they don't even have no historical ties. Their best scholars say it's a hoax. Go ahead, officer. Yep. And, and remember, and don't forget, uh, a couple years ago, remember you had that, Am that Amalek man, so-called Jewish man, spit in that woman's face right. in the restaurant. Right. So they oppressing the people in that land. They got to serve. They required to serve in their military. So you fighting for them, but yet they don't accept you right. they in their land. They tell you that they are you. Ain't that, a, ain't that some mess? Go ahead and read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Beside this, he gave them knowledge. Mm. And the law of life for inheritance. Right. They stand over there talking about I'm the Yehuda and all this. Don't do anything that the scriptures say. Understand that yep. thing, man. That's why That's why this title is the what it is, man. The Semites versus the synagogue of Satan. And the case is being laid out before you, man. What you're seeing over there is the work in the Satan. Believe that. Let's get that out of the, uh, let's get that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Moreover, brethren. I would not that you should be ignorant. I would what? I would not that you should be ignorant. Meaning we need to be well informed in these latter days. Most of us is walking around in, in ignorance. We're thinking that King Solomon was a white man. Read. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. All our fathers were what? Under the cloud. And where else? And all passed through the sea. So we all passed through the sea and was under the clouds. We read what Moses looked like when he was in the woods. He looked like an Egyptian. Read. And we're all baptized unto Moses uh -huh. in the cloud and in the sea. Right. Do you want, you want to say something, Austin? Yeah. The, right there, that's showing you that the church of Corinthians, those was Israelites. Exactly. So that's what it's showing you right there. Because, you know, in Christianity, all oh, those are the Gentiles. Right. But it's letting you know right here that they, their, their forefathers were out there with Moses. So who, mm -hmm. we already proved Moses was a black man. There you go. So, bam. So that's another cut right there. So all this stuff is getting nothing. No false tale or fairy tale stands up against the scriptures. And we even pull that stuff out of the books of antiquity. Read that, man. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, the word Hellenist. Mm -hmm. Hellenist. Jews who made Greek their tongue. It said what? Jews who made Greek their tongue. Uh-huh. And with it, often adopted ideas and practices. Right, just like many of us today, under Greek Greek or these foreign tongues and customs that we celebrate today and keep the day. No different than our forefathers, Christmas, birthdays. Easter, birthdays. All, all Greeks, all Hellenized. Understand the thing. It said Jews who spoke Greek and had Greek customs, like our people today, call themselves African Americans and so forth. It's the same thing. Straight Hellenized over here. So let's go ahead and uh, continue. Let's get let's get more history books. Get from the Maccabees to the Mishnah, uh, pages twenty seven and, and twenty eight. So let's go ahead and break this out. We putting out historical books, man. From the Maccabees to the Mishnah by Shay J D Cohen. Hellenism, Hellenization, and Hellenistic Judaism. Hellenistic Jews were the Jews who lived in the diaspora, spoke Greek. It said Jews that the, the diaspora meaning the, the scattered, in other words, mm -hmm. the dispersed. The dispersed yeah. Read. Who spoke Greek, uh -huh. wrote literature in Greek, uh -huh. and adult, adulterated their religion with ideas and practices imported from the Hellenistic world. Damn, like, like us today. Read on. In contrast, uh -huh. the Jews of Judea. Okay, Southern Kingdom. Lived in the mother country. Uh -huh. Spoke Hebrew. And Aramaic uh -huh. wrote literature in those languages mm -hmm. and struggled to observe their religion in all its rigor and keep it pure from foreign contagion. You see that? So you had to struggle to keep the commandments. That's why we uh, also brought out a snippet in the Maccabees. You couldn't even profess yourself at all to be a Jew, man. You had to call yourself a Greek during that time period. And as a result, a couple centuries later, you were fully Hellenized, man. That's what we read in here. I think we just read whether Jew nor Greek. Right. That's exactly that's what we read. About. We about to get that too. This, this conception was inspired by the figure 
of Paul of Tarsus. Uh, okay. Who seemed to represent the urbane and cosmopolitan, that is, not law observant, mm -hmm. Jew of the diaspora. Talking about them Greeks. In contrast to the Orthodox. In, in contrast to the Southern Canaan. So all his letters he wrote to the Romans, Corinth, uh, Thessalonica, all that. You want to say something, officer? Yes, the historians is letting you know that. Exactly. First Corinthians, Colossians, all them was Israelites that were scattered. That's, that's all it was. That's the Gentiles that's being spoken of. Right. And that's, you know, we go out and we teach that, but we got to bring these books out so they can see the scholars because they, you know, they ain't going to believe it. Right. Big, bro. Right. The scholars is backing up 100% what the scriptures is saying. Keep reading. And legalistic Jews of Judea. Uh huh. New Testament passages like Acts 6 and 1. Which speaks of tensions between the Hebrews mm -hmm. and the Hellenists. Mm -hmm. and the, the, we already read what the Hellenists was. Those were Jews that adopted Greek customs and spoke Greek. And the early church contributed to this conception as well. Right. So that's the whole thing. People read that. That wasn't. Here's the thing. We try to take our knowledge and, 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 and imply it or impose it back in them times. Paul wasn't running around talking to people looking like Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, and all that. No, he was speaking to the dispersed, man, the Israelites of the Bible, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. For who? For Israel. Uh -huh. As that they might be saved. Mm. That's <laughs> Paul didn't say all nations. He said, my, read that again for the people. Brethren. Okay, brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel uh -huh. is that they might be saved. That's some heavy stuff. Go to jump over to the next chapter. Just in case somebody uh sleep at the switch. I want uh Romans eleven and one. The book of Romans, chapter eleven, verse one. Uh -huh. I say then. Hath God cast away his people? His people, meaning possessive. Let's see who his people are. God forbid. Meaning absolutely not. For I also am an Israelite. I'm a what? I also am an Israelite. Read. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the seed, singular, of Abraham. Because Abraham had more than uh, just our forefather uh, Isaac and Jacob. Read. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul is letting you know who his brethren are, who his people are, and specifically what tribe he came from, and saying, don't get it twisted. When you read Gentile, God ain't talking about the other nations. He ain't cast off his people. You want to say something, officer? Okay, okay. Let's keep it moving. Let's watch this. The view of the Hebrews. Yep, yep. That's page 47. Let's get that. That's why, that's why you got to be well-versed in history. And, and the scriptures, uh, no, when you read about the letters of Paul, Paul wasn't writing to no average Joe. You got to understand that thing. Read that. View of the Hebrews of the tribes of Israel in America. Oh, and where? In America. Okay. By Ethan Smith. So this is more to disperse. Let's read that. Page 47. Uh-huh. The entail of the covenant must as surely recover the ten tribes of the Jews. Mm. Paul shows in Romans 11. Paul shows in what? In Romans 11. We just read Romans 11 and 1. Read. The consistency of the rejection of the Jews. The what? The consistency of the rejection of the Jews. Of the rejection of the Jews. Read. With the entail of the covenant with Abraham. Uh-huh. And he makes their final restoration in the last days and tale to this consistency. And meaning what? It's always been the, uh, the, the two kingdoms coming back as one. Read. But this inspired argument as forcibly attach it, attaches itself to the ten tribes uh -huh. to ensure the recovery as to the Jews. As to the Jews, man. One stick. That's that one stick. Is that it on that? He accordingly there says, and so all Israel shall be saved. Uh-huh. Or both branches of the Hebrews shall be recovered. Damn, that's crystal clear. This same point is most positively decided in Jeremiah 30th and 31st chapters, mm. as has appeared in the preceding chapter. Meaning what? Talking about the two covenants. Go ahead, officer. <laughs> so that's showing you right there. Esau is teaching you one thing in this church. But behind the scene in his historical books, he knows the truth. He said he's consistency. The truth. He, and, the, and look, that view of the Hebrews, that's an old book. 
That's a reprint. So originally, I forget the year on that. What's the year on that? Originally published 1825. So that's where you're getting your real truth from right there. See, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like Esau know the truth. We, the bro Us brothers out here and IUIC as a whole, we go out and we try to teach our people because you've been lied to. You've been lied to the whole time. Right. Let's go to Galatians. Because here we go. Let's because what we know what the historian said, who we talking to. So this is where the Christians get uh, stumble uh, stumble at. Read that. Start at verse 28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 28. Uh-huh. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Christian here they see the white man is getting in the kingdom. No, we just read in books of antiquity and through the scriptures. Those are Hellenized Jews, man. Read. There's neither bond nor free. Uh-huh. There's neither male or female, mm -hmm. for ye all are, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You know what? That goes back to the two becoming one. Go to verse twenty three. Verse twenty three. Uh huh. But before faith came, so now we jumped up. Now before faith came, because the Christian runs straight to twenty eight. But the scripture say before faith came, and meaning Christ. Read. We were kept under the law. Who was given the law? Let's get that real quick. Hold that. Give me Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Because now it says we, those are possessive terms, were kept under the law. Who was the laws of God given to? Did he give it to the Greek? Did he give it to the Moabite? Let's see. The book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. Uh-huh. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Okay. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Israel. Okay, read. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So he haven't dealt so with any nation. He gave his laws and statutes to Israel. He didn't do that with the other nations. Read. And as for his judgments. Meaning the penalties for breaking the commandments. They have not known them. Show me slave ships full of Chinese men and women stacked from top to bottom with chains on their neck. You're not finding that, man. Let's go back to that. Genesis chapter. I mean, Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23. Uh-huh. But before faith came. So before Christ came, we were what? We were kept under the law. Of animal sacrifice. So you're not talking about thou should not kill, thou should not steal. Talking about animal sacrifice. Shut up unto the faith. Right. So we were shut un unto Christ. Read. Which should afterwards be revealed. Meaning Christ had to be revealed after the uh, covenant of animal sacrifice. Because that's the only way we can get adopted back into the fold is through Christ. We got to go through Christ. Is that it on that? That's it on that. Let's, yeah, go jump to verse 29 now. Genesis 3 and verse 29. Uh-huh. And if you be Christ, uh -huh. then are you Abraham's seed? We read Paul said he was from the seed of Abraham. Singular, read. And heirs according to the promise. And uh, Let's see who the promise is to. Give me Romans. Go back to Romans 9. Let's go back to Romans 9. It says heirs according to the promise. So let's get that real quick so nobody get confused thinking the promise is open for everybody. Let's see. Read the, that. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Who are Israelites? Okay. To whom pertaineth the adoption. Meaning back into the covenant through the death of Christ, making two into one. We just read that. Read. And the glory. Uh -huh, meaning the kingdom of heaven. And the covenant. The, the old covenant and the new covenant. Read. And the giving of the law. Uh-huh. And the service of God. Uh-huh. We the servants of God. And the promises. And what? And the promises. And the promises. Understand it. So that's who the promises are to, as according uh, to the scriptures. Yeah, read verse 5. Whose are the fathers, uh -huh. and of whom as concerning the flesh. So Israelites are the fathers, whose are concerning the flesh, meaning kinfolk. Read. Christ came. Who? Christ came. Uh-huh. Who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Meaning ain't nothing you can say about that. Overall, God bless forever. Amen. The book is closed, man. It's crystal clear. Hey, that's the only scripture you need right there. That's, that's it. The only it. That's all you need. I don't understand why everybody's confused on What's, anything did else. Did Paul write Romans? <laughs> it's that strong Christian delusion of deception. Okay. All right. So now let's get this. A History of the uh, Jews, page 145. We're going to read the second page. Yeah, start from there. A History of the Jews by Solomon Grezel. Okay. Paragraph two. How the Jewish communities govern themselves. Mm. Among the privileges granted the Jews everywhere in the diaspora. Okay. One of the most important was the privilege of organizing a separate community. The need for common worship 
and the importance of the Jewish diet. Right. So we separated ourselves to make sure we weren't intermingled amongst the seed. And we're going to see if that's historically documented in the scriptures to keep ourselves from getting defiled by these foolish nations. You want to say something, Austin? Awesome? Go ahead. Brought the Jews together. Uh-huh. And also the natural social attraction of people of the same kind for one another. Right, meaning you around like-minded people. You don't see hyenas hanging out with goats, in other words. Read on. They settled close together. Uh-huh. And before long, there were Jewish districts in most towns. Okay. In Alexandria, for example, mm -hmm. two of the five parts into which the city was divided were made up almost exclusively of Jews. Right, you see how we was working together in them times? We need to get back to that spirit. Read. To be sure, many pagans lived within those neighborhoods, uh -huh. while a good many of the wealthier Jews lived in the other parts of the city. Mm. But these two sections were known everywhere as Jewish. Oh, wow. In the city of Rome. Uh -huh. they in the were city what? Of Rome. Didn't Paul write his letters to the church in Rome? Let's see. Let's get some history about Rome. Read. There were also several districts inhabited largely by Jews. So Paul didn't write his, he didn't write his letter to uh, Julius Caesar? Nah, man. Or Augustus. Or Augustus? Nope. Each of the neighborhoods had its synagogue. Uh, what? Each of these neighborhoods had its synagogue. Not these satanic synagogues you see today. Real synagogues where the real Druze uh, uh, resorted. Read. Uh -huh. And every synagogue had its necessary organization. Okay. But a synagogue organization meant more than a society for maintaining a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. Jewish, had, Jewish life had rules of charity, of morals, mm. and laws of right and wrong. Right. So you're reading that. Read on which differed considerably from the laws current among the pagans. Wow. We read that in the book of Maccabees. Hey, that's the same thing with Christianity today. Exactly. Yeah. Pagan Christianity. You ain't got to keep the Mosaic laws and right. all this other foolishness. They ain't got no laws. Are y'all trying to keep the laws? The yeah, blood, yeah. the blood, hey, the blood. And them Christians got a campaign to push against the keeping of God's laws. Right. They're trying to say, nah, you evil for doing that right. thing. <laughs> right. Thou should not kill, thou should not steal. That's so evil. Say much uh -huh. you keep the laws. Hey, 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 <laughs> but real quick, real, while you while you got that, I wanna I'm gonna read Romans seven and one real quick. Because this goes right along with that same point. I got you, I got you. Because remember, Officer Matt said that he was writing to Jews in Rome. Read seven and one. The book of Romans, chapter seven and verse one. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that I know I speak to them that I'm writing to them. That know the law. That know the law of the Jews. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So they understood that they were underneath the law because the law was given unto them. So they knew as long as they are alive, the laws apply to their lives. That's who Paul was writing to. This stuff is plain. But Christianity, a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters under that strong delusion right. of deception. Make, make no mistake about it. They, they choose to be under that delusion because they love the pleasures of sin. That's all it is. Let's keep reading on that. Page 145. Uh-huh. That is why a Jewish community had a community president uh -huh. and also secretaries and charity officers. Wow. Right. So we was, we was organized and in order. Called Gabaim, uh -huh. who took care of the various activities connected with the Jewish life. They also had regular courts of law to judge cases arising between Jews. Right, meaning what? They used the Bible. Mm -hmm. A Jewish community had the power to punish its members for a breach of Jewish law. Uh oh. It is not certain whether the various synagogues in Rome were united in a citywide organization. But it is certain that the Jews of Alexandria were so united. At their head stood a man of their own choice, whose position corresponded to that of the Antiochs of Judea. There was also a council of 70 members, a sort of Sanhedrin that exercised supreme authority over the Egyptian Jews. Right, so they're talking about the, San, the Sanhedrin. Those are the scholars. Read. The Jews were proud of their communal organization. They were what? They were proud of their communal organization. You know what? We, the way we organized and kept our stuff, we took pride in it. We wasn't throwing garbage out our windows like you see today. We in our own neighborhood, rolling down windows, throwing trash out the window, man. You right what is house. wrong with us? Read. But unfortunately, it caused trouble between them 
and the non-Jewish residents. Just like the day. Like you got over in Israel now. You got a group of brothers trying to keep the commandments. The non-Jewish residents talking about, we got to get them up out the land. Read. Of Alexandria. Uh -huh. For while the Jews had always enjoyed religious and group autonomy, uh -huh. the non-Jews of Alexandria had been asking time after time for greater privileges of self-government, which were never granted. This, the pagan Alexandrians felt, was further proof that the Jews were a separate nation. With the what? That the Jews were a separate nation. Uh-huh. Foreigners who lived in their midst. So, exactly. We was a separate nation. So, let's go to uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 2. Because it said we separated ourselves. Let's see if we did that in the scriptures. So, we're going to flip here. Let's see what our forefathers did when the scriptures came out. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the seed of Israel. And the what? And the seed of Israel Read. separated themselves. Did what? Separated themselves uh -huh. from all strangers. From all the heathens, man. Read. And stood and confessed their sins. They did what? Stood and confessed their sins uh -huh. and the iniquities of their fathers. That's what we got to do. We got to confess the evils that we've done and the evils that our forefathers did. When you, That's even in um, 1 Kings 8. That's how we start the repentance process. We got a ways to go, man, because today if you get out there and you're talking about your history, the first thing a nigga we're going to say is, what about the white man? <laughs> That's all they were about. Literally. But back then, our ancestors was trying to get away from all the nations. So that's just showing you, man, we got to get back to, to, to looking out for ourselves. You understand that? We got to get back to working together. So let's and, go to Revelation. And taking pride in our community. Yeah, taking again. pride in your community, yeah. So what about your community? What about cleaning up? What about the drug dealers on the street? What about that? Why are we worried about other nations? Let's go to uh, Revelations 2 and 9. That's all, that's all we care about. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So who's in tribulation and poverty? Are the people that's in Israel <laughs> in tribulation and poverty? Don't, mean, they, don't they own all the movie theaters? Banking system. Banking system. They own the Hollywood, money. music. They own the Federal Reserve. Right. Federal Reserve, furniture. Yeah, everything. Insurance companies. All that. So they that's obviously not talking about them. Read. But thou art rich. We're rich because the, the Israelites of the Bible, everything in this Bible pertains to them. That's why we're rich. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not. So who's saying they the Jews? Who everybody know is the Jews? The Bible saying they not the Jews. Read. But are the synagogue of Satan. So that's what the Bible says. Hold up. Let's get another thing. Type, go to Google, type in Jews and hit images. Let's see. Because people play dumb. Don't y'all brothers call yourselves the Jews? Let's see what Google say who the Jews are. Because there's always some scoffer watching. Looking to get his coon on. That's a oh, what? what, what? Hey, get, get, Take get. it back again. Hit, hit home. Say so don't think it's some brothers out here working witchcraft on Google. Type in Google, you type in Jews, and then go to E W S. And click images so nobody plays stupid. Scroll. Now read that again for the people. Hold on, scroll down some. Let me see if any Negroes pop up. Right. Yeah. Look what they, they got up there. Look at them stupid hats. Read that again for them the so, book, the, so the people know we're not out here making up nothing. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. So the people saying they are Jews, when you pull up Google and everything else. Who That's what Google's saying. Jews? That's what Google's saying. Read. Hey, hold on. The only, go back up real quick. The only black man that comes up is because they're still they separating us. They say Jewish, man. Yeah, he I know. married to no, an Edomite. That's what I'm black saying. Yeah. Jewish. That's talk, what I'm saying. They still separating us. Series. Man, finish the scripture because Google out here said that's who the, what Google yep. says is what the world say, man. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. That's what the Bible say. So now, earlier we read, uh, what was that, uh, Micah 2 and 1? Mm -hmm. And it talked about how they take fields by violence. Let's just read it real quick. Just We're going to just hit it real fast. Micah, I think it's, yeah, 2 and 1. We're just going to read it real quick. That's heavy nah, right there. Verse 2. The, two book of, two. the book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence. 
and houses and take them away. So they so oppress that, up. That's, that's enough on that. Now let's roll the video. So let's see what they got going on over there. We're on the grounds of Al-Aqsa. It's one of the holiest places in the Islamic religion. And so we've come here today on one of the holiest nights of Ramadan. The crowds are huge. So if anything happens, it could potentially be very dangerous to the people that are here. It's nighttime prayers for Palestinian Muslims. And this year, Israeli forces showed up unannounced. So you can see that there is Israeli police actually inside, in the grounds of Al Aqsa. That's what triggered the protests, and that's what triggered the anger today. Palestinians feel like they're being pushed out of East Jerusalem. The city they see is the capital of a future Palestinian state. They say Israel is upping its efforts to redraw the borders of the city. But Israel claims it belongs to them, despite the United Nations saying it's an occupation, illegal under international law. The Israeli police have been arresting loads of Palestinian children. Two Palestinians are retaliating because so many young men have been taken away by police. As Ramadan continued, Palestinians in East Jerusalem faced stun grenades, arrests, and water cannons. Some of the worst violence seen in years. East Jerusalem is important to... Hey, look, we know the land don't belong to either one of them, but we just showing you that, that they running the Palestinians out there. They don't, have, they, don't, they don't belong on the land either, but it's just showing you what they do. Right. Despite what the U.N. say, it's an occupation, it's illegal. They just going there just taking it all, man. Man, I'm going to tell you, go ahead. Let's get Revelations, man, 3 and 9. Because Christ had to write this in here twice. Hey, but you know, that go right back to what you were saying earlier about did they cover fields. Like, how did they get America? They took it by violence. They covered it. They took it by violence. How did they get Australia? Took it by violence. Africa took it by violence. Even Europe, where a lot of people think is their homeland, they took that by violence, too. Everywhere Esau goes. Damn and you know what's crazy? Here we are on the show talking about we are the, uh, the sons of Shem. And then they're going to turn around and say we anti-Semitic when they see the video, which makes absolutely no sense when we saying we Semitic. You hate yourself. And we actually are more pro-Semitic than anybody else in the world. But they'll put that title on there to throw you off, to throw that Jedi mind trick on you. That's all that is. Like they, they don't have no proof that they the Jews. They can't prove nothing. Every time you question one of them, they go, we got the records back to 3,000 years and all this. Okay, well, show me in the Bible where you're an Israelite or a Jew and it's crickets. <laughs> we just read out of their records that their scholars wrote that they know they're not the Jews, man. Hey, and that's why they want to shut down the Israelites and this, and this truth going out there because they know they cannot prove biblically that they are the real is or historically that they the real Jews. That's why you got a lot of them uh, uh, Ishmaelites over there. They like these false. They false. A lot of them already know that thing. Yeah. They're not going to say who the real ones are, but they're going to damn sure say the white man over nah, there is an imposter. They got a covenant. They, they, all, they all got one, one thing in agreement. Oh, no, we can't allow these Negroes to come back because they're going to put all of us under subjection. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. Damn, it says, I will make them 
of the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, let's type in Jews and type in synagogue. Let's see who come up. Jews and synagogue, which say they are Jews. Read. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Letting you know that them people that are saying that, lying. Google okay. lying right now. Hey. <laughs> hey, and the thing is, look at the nature and the behavior of these people that call themselves the Jews or Jewish, they're supposed to be the holiest people in the earth. But look how they lie, steal, rob from you, stab you in your back, kill, push you, steal your land. Like we saw that video Bishop did where the uh, Amalek was like, hey, if I don't steal your house, somebody else is going to steal your house. But yet you're supposed to be the people that are underneath the laws. Read Be, it from the top. Behold, Revelation 3 and 9. Get that one right there. The Australian Jews or something right Be, there. Get that. Yes, in the synagogue right there. Behold, I'll, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You see that? Because when Christ comes back, they're going to get down on their knees and kiss your feet. That's what's going to happen when Christ comes back. Yep, that's, and the ones that's ignorant... Gonna be pissed off. They be like, "Damn, we've been we've been lied to." They look, they lied to their own damn people. <laughs> yeah, some of them believe that foolishness. Let's get the book. Let's go ahead and get the book. Let's see what what Esau wrote about his own people. Who is Esau? Edom by Charles A. Wiseman, a white man. The, Ka the Khazars were a nomadic people who had no traces of Hebraic culture. Damn. <laughs> that Jones back. said no trace. No trace. Not a cent. They had been following a pagan and sex-oriented religion until they had officially embraced Judaism. So it's, they was pagans. And it, they still really are they don't really follow the Bible. They still at are all. pagans. No, and they still pagans. lascivious. They said they followed a the sex what? A sex-oriented religion. Y'all going to see some of that too. Read. Until they had officially embraced Judaism in 740 A.D. While rejecting Christianity and Mohammedism, the Jewish author and historian Arthur Kolser also concludes that the majority of East European Jews and hence the world of Jewry, Jewry is of Khazar and not of Semitic origin. And we're going to read his book later. He got put to death, too, for writing that book. Read. He did. He got it in, though. In the beginning of his book, he states, the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European, and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga. Damn. Not from Canaan, but from the caucus. Damn. So, right. so I'm letting you know, they, they white folks. That's right. what I'm letting you know, they Caucasians. Right. Type, type that in. Type oh, in the hey, river. Hey, hey. And even, even Canaan. Canaan. Type in V-O-L-G-A. Was, was a land of the Hamites. Right. right. So Watson said, they ain't come from the Jordan. They came from the Volga. We got to pull this stuff up because our people don't be believing us. So you get, keep reading. And that genetically, they are more closely related to Hun, Ugur, and and Magar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As the Khazars left their homeland of Khazaria and migrated north and west, they lost their name and became known as Jews. They lost, they, they threw away their name and took our name. That's right. what they did, read. Look at that. Look at the Volga River right there on the uh, edge where the Caucasus Mountains are. Already letting you know. As they crossed over, they dropped their name and started calling themselves the Yehudi. That's what the scholars just said. Go ahead and read. The best historical ever. Oh, the Yiddish language and alphabet is not of the Israelites. Damn. So all that mess they talking over there, they ain't got nothing to do with Israelite culture at and all. brothers running around there talking about the Hebrew. But an amalgamation of Aramaic, medieval German, Slavic and Russian dialects. The best historical evidence, therefore, shows that the Jews are not descended directly from the Israelites of the Bible, but derive much of their ancestry from the Khazars and other people of Turkish 
Asiatic blood. Hey, 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 because remember how you mentioned earlier uh, about the mystery of iniquity and how it talks about how the Most High is allowing or letting them be in power. Because when you look at that, that lets you know a lot of these e other Edomite scholars know they false. Right. But yet, these e also Edomite kingdoms and the nations set them up in the land. Mm -hmm. But they set them up for a reason because they had to remove us from our heritage. Remember, they, they took away our heritage. They took away our land. They took away, said, no, nah, y'all not the Jews at all. And right. they put somebody else in it. Right. You just, we just read that when they said when they got about the caucus, they dropped their old names and picked up our names. So as we got taken from ours, they just picked our names up. The Khazars are also of Edomite stock. Damn. Hey, letting you know that's Esau. <laughs> that's all it is. They just Edomites <laughs> trying to pretend like they Jake. They trying to steal back their birthright. <laughs> Go ahead. And you know, and you know, a lot of people foolish. They say, "Oh, e Esau was killed off. The Edomites don't exist no more." What are you? What Bible are you reading? They have a future judgment coming. That means all eighteen nations still here on the earth. They got to pay for the Most High is the just God. They got to pay for the atrocities that they've done unto Israel. And both stocks make up the present day Jews. Idumeans, Edomites, were made Jews, and a Turkish people, Khazars, were mainly Jews in South Russia. The main part of Jewry never was in Judea and never come out of Judea. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, the original stock of the Khazars came from the land of Edom. So those Edomites, that's what the scholars are saying. And I mean, we already know this, but we got to go to these third party sources because, you know, they don't believe Negroes in purple, man. So we got to we got to we got to bring out the white man. So y'all will believe it. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the next book. This is the book that was being referenced right here. The 13th tribe. Let's get that. The 13th tribe by Arthur Kostler. What is in dispute is the fate of the Jewish Khazars after the destruction of their empire in the 12th or 13th century. On this problem, the sources are scant, but various late medieval Khazar settlements are mentioned in the Crimea, in the Ukraine, in Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. So that's all up there in Europe. That's all where all that's the all white Eastern folks, Europe. Yeah, that's all Edom, where the Edom. white folks live at. That's letting you know that that's where these people is coming from. Right on the other side of the Caucasus Mountains. And this is a so-called Jewish uh, scholar that's writing this book. Go ahead. <clears throat> the general picture that emerges from these fragmentary pieces of information is that of a migration of Khazar tribes and communities into those regions of Eastern Europe, mainly Russia and Poland, where at the dawn of the modern age, the greatest concentrations of Jews were found. This has led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews, and hence the word Jewry, might be of Khazar and not of Semitic origin. You see that? They let you know, well, they are Semitic because they come from Esau, but he don't want to, see, he's a, a fake Jew, so he don't want to say, uh, look, I'm an Edomite. So he's like, look, we got to be from somewhere else. <laughs> we can't be from Esau. Go ahead. Nobody, nobody's claiming to be a spiritual Israel, uh, Edomite. Right. You don't see that nowhere. Go the, ahead and read. The, the far-reaching implications of this hypothesis may explain the great caution exercised by historians in approaching this subject, if they do not avoid it altogether. Meaning that them Jews over there is fake. That's what they want to avoid. Thus, in 1973 edition of the Encyclopedia Judicaea, the article Khazars is signed by Dunlop, but there is a separate section dealing with Khazar Jews after the fall of the kingdom signed by the editors, and written with the obvious intent to avoid upsetting believers in the dogma of the chosen race. So they don't want to upset the ones that's believing a lie, because you got some of the people that's, that's Jewish that actually believe that thing. They really believe they God's chosen people. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known, but that does not alter the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga, 
not from Canaan, but from the caucus, once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race, and that genetically they are more closely related to Hun, Ugar, and Magar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should, it, should this turn out to be the case, then the term anti-Semitism will become void of meaning based on a misappre misapprehension shared both by the killers and the victims. The story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. Hey, look. Hey, he, look, this man's sick when he found out the truth about his heritage. Right. He said, damn, the killers and the victims, meaning Hitler and uh, the fake Jews, was fooled, man. He said it's one of the most cruel hoax that history's ever played. We're going to got to get this part to see how they was living, man. Right, yeah, there. we got to get that. Verse 39. Page 39. Accustomed to the splendid baths of Baghdad, our traveler could not get over the dirtiness of the Turks. So these people, not, not only are they fake, but they dirty as hell. That's what this is letting you know. Keep reading. The goos do not wash themselves after defecating or urinating. No, so hold on. <laughs> you mean that the dude don't even wipe his behind, man? They ain't even wipe their ass. They just <laughs> drop something and they just keep it moving. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, hey, look. That's crazy right there, man. No, no that means that's that crazy. Go ahead, man. That means that John caked up. <laughs> <laughs> the goods do not wash themselves after defecating or urinating, nor do they bathe after seminal pollution or on other occasions. So after they had sex, they just keep it moving, too. They just... <laughs> they said on other occasions, so or they other never... Case, whatever. <laughs> hey, look. This young crazy, man. Go ahead. They refuse to have anything to do with water, Partic particularly, particularly in the winter, when the goods commander-in-chief took off his luxurious coat of brocade to don a new coat the mission had brought him. They saw that his underclothes were fraying apart from dirt. Damn. There's crust up in that joint. <laughs> Go ahead. Is that cake? For it is their custom never to take off their garment. They wear it close to their bodies until it disintegrates. So hold on. They just keep their drawers on until they fall apart. That's, man, that's some crazy stuff right there. Go ahead and read that. <sighs> Another Turkish tribe, the Bashkurs, shave their heads and eat their lice. They search the folds of their undergarments and crack the lice with their teeth. When Ibn Fadlan watched a, a basker do this, the later remarked to him, they are delicious. Hey, look. Man, I'm telling you, their history is something else. You know ain't no way in the hell God's chosen people is rolling like that, man. It ain't no way. They, it's, it's crazy, man. Hey, hey, before you go to the next point, I want to get uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and 4. Because you got to, the most high, they pro, it was prophesied that we would lose our heritage. It was prophesied that we would be removed from us. But so now, you got to think, when did that ever happen to Amalek? The book of Jeremiah Chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So how did we discontinue? We were put into slavery. We were cut off. We was renamed. We, was, we were forced that you couldn't speak your own language. You couldn't keep your own customs. You were Hellenized. You were forced to convert into these heathen customs. So it was discontinued, just like the language was also discontinued. Hebrew was uh, pretty much damn near a dead language. And they mixed these other languages together to recreate the Yiddish crap, which is not the pure Hebrew. Read. From thine heritage that I gave thee, mm -hmm. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemy. You see that thing? And I will cause thee. So it's the two parts. You will be discontinued or cut off from your heritage, and then I will cause you to serve your enemies. They ain't doing that over there. They running the land. They running the banking industry and all that. Who they serving yep. other than the devil? In yep. the land which thou knowest not. 
here in America, South America, uh, Africa, Israel, all, yep. all matter, the four corners of the earth where we were scattered. We served our enemies. And we were not called the Jews. That's why our brothers will go back over there and say, well, hey, this is our home. This is our ancestral homeland. And Amalek over there like, no, it's not. Because we were cut off. And guess what? All the other nations will back that up. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Because we transgressed the laws of the Most High God. So this was the punishment that the curses was put upon us. What else? Hey. All right, let's go ahead to go to uh, Ezekiel 36. Let's see the prophecy about who would be living in the land of Israel right now. Let's go see that. Let's see that. 36 and 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 and verse 25. 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the red residue of the heathen. And against all I do me. Against who? All I do me. So we're talking about the Dumians or the Edomites. Which have appointed my land into their possession. So it's like, you know, that the Edomites would appoint God's land into their possession. Wait, 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 wait. That's a real good scripture and good point right there. Because if Amalek is not the Edomites, then what nation did that? What nation did that? You see what I'm saying? Because Ishmael, the Palestinians, they say clearly we are Ishmael. Yeah. We descend from Ishmael. They will openly and clearly say that, and they understand that. Nobody yep. want to claim this guy right here, this Idumian. Nobody. They, they avoid that. Go. Like the Huns avoided war. But the Bible's prophesying that they will do what? Read that again. I have spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, uh -huh. which have appointed my land. Have appointed. In other words, made Jerusalem theirs and said, this is our homeland. This is our true land. And to their possession uh -huh. with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So now think about it. They go over there. They be all celebrating and oh, no, no, this thing speaking all their Yiddish, thinking that that's their land. They over there kissing the darn rock over there. This is the holy land doing a little bobbing the head stuff. Don't forget when they take the chicken, cut the head off, start. Yeah, they got some wild <laughs> customs. Ain't none of that mess in the Bible either. That's what's crazy about it. Let's go to the <laughs> let's go to the uh, video. Now we got. Yeah, let's get the video real quick. May 14, 1948, 4 p.m. Tel Aviv. On a small podium stands a determined Zionist leader before a hastily convened gathering, reading out a proclamation which would change the course of history. This is how the state of Israel was born. First, a bit of background. At the end of World War I, the Allied powers gained control over the Middle East, including the land of Israel. The League of Nations recognized the historical connection of the Jewish people to their land and granted Great Britain a mandate to help them reconstitute a national home. However, Arab riots and geopolitical considerations led to a series of British restrictions on Jewish development and immigration. Even ships, including displaced children and the Holocaust survivors, were sent back to Europe. Jewish resistance grew as well. By 1947, the ball was back in the United Nations court, where a majority of the nations decided on November 29th, after a tense vote, to divide the land into a Jewish and an Arab state. The Jews rejoiced. The local Arab population, well, they launched a war throughout the country. May 15, 1948 was the date the British mandate officially ended, the date the Jewish state was to be declared, and the date five regular Arab armies planned a coordinated attack to annihilate the newborn state. On May 12th, David Ben-Gurion convened the People's Council. The atmosphere was grave. Moshe Charette reported that the Americans are demanding a postponement of the declaration, or else they would not help Israel against the United Arab invasion. Golda Meir reported that King Abdullah had retracted his original agreement and will join the attack. Military leaders expressed serious doubts about the ability of the small Jewish community to withstand five regular Arab armies equipped with European weaponry. 
But somehow, after 13 hours of deliberations, Ben-Gurion succeeds in swaying the balance against the American demand. And on Friday, May 14th, in the presence of local Jewish leaders, he declares the establishment of the State of Israel. The proclamation, which was inspired by the American Declaration of Independence, asserted the historical and moral rights of the Jewish people in its historic homeland and defined Israel as a Jewish democratic state based on equal rights, freedom, and justice. The declaration ended with a call on Jews to return. So what you write, you saw just right there was uh, Ezekiel, what we just read, 36 and 5. They put their land in their, their possession right there. Hey, yeah, pull up that picture that you sent me. That lines in right with Ezekiel 36 and 5 that we just brought out. Read it again. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. So it's Idumia, and what they do? Which have appointed my land into their possession. So the people that's in the land, God is saying that they are Idumians. That's what God is saying. Read. With the joy of all their heart. We just saw them celebrating happy. It was happy. Read. With the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Okay, we got the picture. Is that it? Let's go ahead and get the book. It's coming up for a little while. We'll get it. Now, there it is. He got it coming up. There you go. That's your man that was going into the woman's backyard saying, if I don't take it, if that Israeli proverb, if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. Uh, so another one of his, his Amalekite yeah, brothers. This, this this just recently, this was going on now. Yeah, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah Amalek over there taking the land from the Palestinians. That's that pride of Esau. Joke is there, man. Let's yeah, let's get the book. Go ahead and get that. Who was Esau? By Charles Wiseman. Herod was a shrewd and unscrupulous tyrant, and was despised by the Judites because he was an Idumean. He was a what? An Idumean. Read. And not one of their own stock. Herod hated the people of Judah. And one of his first acts was to execute 45 of the leaders of the old aristocracy aristocracy, to, el to eliminate any rivalry for leadership. Having secured the kingship, Herod next destroyed the priestly line of, the Hi of Hycranus. Mm, so the, Hycranus, read. John Hycranus, read. The last being, Antigonus, who taunted Herod with his Idumean origin and asserted that the kingdom should fall on one of the royal family. So he was teasing them because the fact that he wasn't a real Jew. He was an Edomite running, running Jerusalem. Read. Finally, he murdered Aristobulus, the last of the Aaronic high priests. Herod then sought to affiliate himself with the high priesthood through marrying Miriam, Aristobulus' sister and the daughter of a high priest. Herod, the daughter of uh, John Hycranus, I believe. Read. Herod even rebuilt the temple as it was in ruins from repeated sieges, part of which Herod was responsible for by his attack upon the city. The temple of God became, in a sense, Herod's temple. We thus find that in the years just before the time of Christ, Judea was controlled by an Edomite faction. That's letting you know that the Edomites is already trying to take over. That's why when we read Revelations 2 and 9, Christ was talking about those calling themselves Jews and are not. He was talking about Herod and all of them are already there taking over. Read. Right, right. So, so, so that means even during the time of Christ, there were already converts, I do mean converts, that ruled over the land. And we're going to show you how they came in the land. Keep reading. We thus find that in the years just before the time of Christ, Judea was controlled by an Edomite faction who usurped the Judite, the, Ju, the Judite name, land, and heritage. Under Hycranus, the Edomites were forced to be part of the Judean culture. You see that? So that's what happened. John Hycranus, when he was ruling, he forced the Edomites to learn our customs. So they adopted all of our customs. Read. But under Herod, the Herodian faction had control over the Judeans' culture. You see that? They took over. That's what happened. We had, we had them in subjection, and then they took over. They took our place. Read. 
and the way of life. Confounding the matter is in fact that some Judites had intermixed with Edomite, Canaanite, and other alien stock. So our brothers started mixing. Our brothers and sisters started mixing. And you, they, and you know the thing did. is that that same thing happened during the Dark Ages, when we ruled during the Dark, when we ruled as as kings, and then they let what Esau come in the midst, come into their government, and eventually took it over during the Renaissance. All right, go ahead, keep reading. These mixed blood people were also hostile toward the Judean Israelites. The land was not the kingdom of Judah, but the nation of the Jews, Judeans. Historically, the Edomites became known as Jews. You see that? They became known. Now, let's jump to the Westminster Dictionary because we got to hurry up. I got two more things to get. The dictionary, page 237. Uh, nah, it should be, yeah, that book right there. Yeah. Because e even when you look it up in the uh, Zondervan Bible Dictionary, when you look up Herod, it lets you know that he was an, an, a Roman Idumian ruler. The Westminster Dictionary of the Bible. Copyright 1898. You see how old this book is? 1898. Now go ahead to page 237. Herod. Herod the Great. He was the second son of the Idumian Antipas. So he was an Edomite, read. Or Antipater, by his wife Cyprus, who was the same race. Damn. Thus neither by the father's nor the mother's side was Herod a real Jew. So he was a convert, just like what you got over in the land right now, read. Though the Idumeans, who had been conquered 125 B.C., by John Hycranus. You see that? They got conquered by John Hycranus, the, the Edomites or the, the Idumeans read. And compelled to be circumcised and adopt Judaism had now became nominally Jews. You see that? That's how they took over right there. Jump to the next page. We're going to get a little section right there on the next page. Herod, just before the capture of Jerusalem, by which he became king, married his second wife, the beautiful and chaste Miriam, the granddaughter of Hycranus. So that was a granddaughter of John Hycranus. So now let's jump to the next book, The History of the Jews, page 74, 75. It's going to get a little bit more history on that. So we're going to show you how they transitioned into taking over our whole everything that we got. That's what's going on right now. History of the Jews by Solomon Grezel. The conquest of Edom. When nations start on the road of conquest, they do not know where to stop. Between expansion for the sake of economic welfare and expansion for the sake of power and glory is but a short step. One of the trade routes between the northeastern lands of Asia and Egypt passed south of Judah through the territory of Idumea. Hycrane used this as an excuse for conquering and annexing that entire country. So John Hycrane, as I forgot to mention, was the son of Simon in the Maccabees, when you're reading in the Maccabees. That's his son. It's right at the end of 2 Maccabees, I think, where they bring him in. So this is his son. So if you're familiar you know, with the Maccabees, which most of the people are, this is the son of Simon. So read. And he did big work. Yeah, he put in big work. More serious. In order to make sure of the Idumeans' loyalty, he actually compelled the Idumeans to adopt Judaism. Quite apart from the predicament of the Idumeans, the situation had elements of tragedy. Here was a grandson of Mattathias, violating the very principle, religious freedom, which the previous generation had so nobly defended, that subsequently the Idumeans became ardent adherents of Judaism as a complement to Judaism. But it cannot save, serve as justification for those who spread it by force. So it's just letting you know right there that he basically forced them. It's giving you more details on the fact that he forced them to serve. That's how they became familiar with all our laws and our customs. And eventually they took over. And those are the people you see today in Israel. Right. They're going to be forced to serve again, but it ain't going to be no takeover this time. You best believe that. So I was going to get one more. I'll close out with a scripture um, for my section. Luke. Uh, we're going to go to Luke 21 and show you that there's no way that those people are Israelites that's in that land right now, according to the scriptures. We already showed you historically. The book of 
book of Luke, <clears throat> chapter 21, and verse 21. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Hold on. Go to verse 20 real quick. Verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So this took place in 70 A.D. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. That's Africa. That's where most of the Israelites fled. Read. And let them which are of the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And the things that was written is in Deuteronomy 28. You start at verse 52 where it talk about the fall of Jerusalem. Read. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land. Because you can read about how uh, the Israelites were forced to eat their own children because they didn't have any food. They had cut off the food and the water to the country. Read. And wrath upon this people. Read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Because Jerusalem got conquered. And shall be led away captive into all nations. So it's like, you know, the, the Israelites of the Bible would be in all nations led away captive. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So it's like, you know, that the people in the land are Gentiles. Until Christ returns, the land will be full of Gentiles. So those people over there, according to the scriptures, there's no way they could be the Israelites. Yeah, let's uh let's continue. Let's get some of uh Amalek or Esau's judgment. Let's get Genesis 36. The book start of at verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 36 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Actually and jump start go to 8. Go to verse 8. Verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau and Mount Sire. So Mount Sire is with their homeland. Read. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. So there's no confusion. Read on. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites. Edomites, meaning the nation of people. Multiple people, not just one person. Read. And Mount Sire. So that was their that was their appointed land. That was their homeland. Hey, pull up, pull up Mount Sire. Why will we continue? Petra. Verse 12. And Timnah was concubine to Elf Eliphaz, Esau's son. Mm -hmm. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. So now, this, this is proven biblically that Amalek is, a, is one of the Edomite, one of the Edomite sons of the nation of Esau. That's who Amalek is. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. These were the dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Taman, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, and Duke Canaz. So there were dukes. They were rich. Get uh, Mount Seir. Get Petra. There we go. Petra. Hey, Petra. The, the, that's the, their homeland. The one that got the columns. Yeah. Yep. And that's why they still there we go. push and institute the same architecture. It's like yeah. they're they're clearly showing the world this is us. This is our yeah, it looks like the Roman Colosseum. This is our origin. They've been doing the same thing for every kingdom that they have established. From from here to Greece to Rome to the United States to Europe, all the king Edomite kingdoms, they push the same architectural theme and they promote that thing. Hey, type in the Supreme Court and look, it's going to look just, just like that. That's the same thing. Same exact architecture. They, all, they haven't changed. The Romans, all of that. It's the same people. Yep. Yep. Now let's, let's continue. Duke Korah, Duke Gatam, and Duke Amalek. And Duke Amalek. So... We this whole this whole class is about the Amaleks, also known as the so-called Jewish people, which is really Esau. They all are Edomites. They are the nation of Esau. Now let's jump to um. Let's get Hugh Ze Zechariah. Yeah, Zechariah, 
Zechariah. Because man, Officer, Officer Mendel had made a point earlier about who would dwell in the land in these last days. The book, Zechariah about to prophesy too. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. The bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, meaning Tel Aviv. A bastard. That means Esau, Amalek, so-called Jewish, is a bastard. The most I say this dude's a bastard. He says he's not my children. Yeah, That's what he yeah. says. It's not my children. My children are not dwelling in the land right now. Mm -hmm. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. That goes into that goes into your Palestinians. Now let's get um uh, let's get Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's start at verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 7. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And that's the reason why the real Israelites receive the judgments and the punishments and the curses, because we transgress God's laws. When you read Amos, Amos chapter 3, he says he loves us and only deals with us, and that's why he punishes us. Read. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with son. Uh-huh. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? You see that thing? So guess what? Just like we read earlier about how uh, Amalek is a bastard, he ain't. They, these dudes do much evil in the earth, and they don't get chastised. Read. But if you be without chastis chastisement, Wherefore, all are partakers, then are ye bastards. See that? Wherefore, are you bastards? Damn. Read. And not sons. And you're Damn. not sons. Damn. Not sons of the Most High. You are not the chosen people. They are phonies. And they have, they, they, look, this whole thing is the biggest deception in the entire earth. Verse 15. Looking diligently... Lest any man fail of the grace of God, uh -huh. lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore many be defiled, Breathe. lest there be any fornicator uh -huh. or profane person, profane person as Esau, as Esau the Edomites, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. Read on. For ye know how that afterward. When he would have inherited the blessing, mm -hmm. he was rejected. Rejected. That means all the people of Esau, Idumia, the Edomites, Amalek, have been rejected. Read. For he found no place of repentance. And they have no place of repentance. So why do you think they have this constant campaign to keep the, the, the true Israelites on the bottom? Though he sought it carefully with tears. Yep, no matter how much they're crying and pleading with the Most High, he said, hell no, you are a bastard, and you're not getting no place for repentance. So let's, uh, now let's jump. Let's jump to uh, Malachi, Malachi 4 and 1. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 4, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. So, so remember, we read earlier in Genesis how at one point in time they were dukes. They were they be they were really rich. They at one, but they but remember the Most High said, "I will uh, make 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 you desolate," right? So that's when they became impoverished. They weren't ruling. They didn't have that power. But they said they're gonna do what? We will return. And build the desolate places. That happened during the Renaissance period. Because the word Renaissance means the rebirth. So what is this rebirth? Yeah. It's the rebirth of the Edomite rulership and kingdom. I just wanted to bring out the impoverished part. We went over that when they was in the, up there eating them lice oh, and yep. all that stuff with all yeah, that yeah, dirt and everything. Yeah. Esau is the caveman. Right. Cave dweller. That's, it's in their, their uh, race name. Cave dweller. He is the caveman. Hey, you want to get that in Joe, my officer? Hey, hey, and that didn't happen like they like they like some of their scientists say thousands of years ago. This happened after the, the dark ages. During just before the Renaissance. They were cavemen. Yeah, the book that. of Job, chapter 30, and verse 1. Uh-huh. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision. 
whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. You see that thing? He said, man, I wouldn't have these Edomites sit with the dogs, my don, my pets. Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me? Hey, and, and the reason why is because they're going to do all types of profane things to your animals, like it says Esau, like we read, just finished reading. Just like there was a, a clip we saw where an Edomite man was in a car, l the dog was licking him in his mouth, and he's licking the dog back. Right, right. Yeah, let's look that up, though. Look on the, Type in the definition of profane, because this is what's going on. We, gotta, we can't just breeze over these words in the scriptures, man. Watch this. Watch what come up when we type in profane, because this is this man's religious practices. Mm -hmm. So let's read this real quick, because we'll read no profane person. We just casually slide right past that word. Now, we're going to get all the meat up off that bone. We're going to see how vile this man is, man. Let's get that up for the people, man. Let's hurry up with that. Profane. Zoom in. Relating. Or devoted to that which is not sacred. And he's doing everything against the Bible. Or yep. biblical. Uh-huh. Worldly. Syn synonyms. No, worldly. It says secular, uh -huh. meaning carnal. Secular rather than religious. Uh-huh. Synonyms. Worldly, earthly, non-religious, unhallowed. That's that man's, everything about him is satanic, what that's telling you. So when it says no profane person, that's meaning satanic, man. Oppose to everything God comes down with, he goes in the opposite direction. Hey, there you go. He that's, just throw the Bible behind his back. Hey, 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 look at, the, look at what they're pushing right now. They will turn you, you will be born a man and be, they can transform you into a woman. Right, do we got that clip? Is this the clip right here, that rabbi? Yeah. Oh, the... the <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead and roll this profane person, man. Look at these people, man. Go and roll that clip. Disturbing allegations are surfacing in a very unexpected place. A man who was supposed to bring joy and holiness to the Jewish ritual of circumcision is now accused of something unthinkable, spreading a deadly disease to innocent babies. News 12's Tara Rosenblum joins us now with her special report, Cradle of Secrets. It's a topic that not many people want to talk about, but an unlikely whistleblower. A young Orthodox Jewish woman is now speaking out, claiming a local rabbi is infecting babies, making them sick. And what's worse, she says no one is doing anything to stop him. For centuries, when a Jewish baby boy is born, the ancient ritual of circumcision is performed. But in some ultra-Orthodox communities, religious leaders known as Moyles also engage in something controversial during the bris. In a practice known as Metsitsa Bepe, or just MBP, the Moyle actually uses his mouth to suck the blood from the infant's penis after he cuts off the foreskin. Meant to prevent infection and serve as a celebration of life, News 12 has learned the little-known practice has turned into a curse for life for some babies involved in our area. And it's all because of a local rabbi who's alleged to have a sexually transmitted disease. The rabbis are going to take care of it. They won't let him get away with it. According to these documents we obtained from the state health department, Rabbi Yitzhak Fisher of Muncie has been tied to at least three herpes infections in babies, one of whom died back in 2004. Shortly after the tragic death, Rabbi Fisher was forbidden from practicing NBP in New York. But despite this state-issued ban, one concerned mother tells us the infected moil is still placing innocent lives at risk. They should be arresting Rabbi Fisher. He should be in jail for murder, for homicide, for infanticide. This outraged parent will call Rena, who asked us to disguise her face and voice, claims she can prove Rabbi Fisher is still practicing MVP. She says she very recently secretly recorded a phone conversation with him in which she requested the rabbi to perform the controversial service. But at one point during the call, Rena questions the safety of oral suction and references the recently reported death of a baby in New York City just last September. Pro 
a profane person. That thing right there is vow. And that, that custom's no way in the scriptures. This is stuff that they make up themselves and they do because they are profane people, a vow people. Let's get, uh, where was we at? We had a joke at 30. 30 and 3. We're going to say it'll go back. Yeah. Job, Job 30 and verse 3. This is why he wouldn't have him sitting with his dogs, man. This dude topping off babies, man. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. Who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. Mm-hmm. They were driven forth from among men. You see that? Even they, Men drew them away. They're like, we don't want to deal with these dudes. They vow. MDP. And they said, nah, we got to run these dudes up in the hills, man. Yep. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. There you go. That's Esau. Caucasians, meaning cave dweller. Let's get uh let's get first Samuels. Malachi yeah. chapter one and verse four. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, mm-hmm. but we will return. Yeah, that's when they was impoverished. When they was dwelling in them caves. And build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. The most high gonna destroy them at the end. Raising them up as the most powerful kingdom in the earth. For so that way all nations can be looked upon. Is this the man that one point in time had the the earth in subjection? Because the most high destroyed him, just like he destroyed Egypt when Egypt was the most powerful country or nation in the earth. Now let's jump to first Samuel. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. That's the point. It said the indignation against forever. Right. And the border of wickedness, man. Yeah. And the border of wickedness. So all wickedness beginning and ending starts with him. He the measuring stick. Yeah, because can't nobody get more wicked than topping off a baby. Like that's yeah. on a whole nother level. Man, my man go from crack. I don't even know how you even come up with that concept. Like, they, I don't even know how you imagine that to come up with that and make that a ritual. Right, exactly. Because exactly. right. they vow. They it vow was a custom. Right. We yeah. read in the books, it was extreme cracking lights in their teeth. They, they go from cracking lights to foreskins, man. And ain't nobody got a problem with that. Yep. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, mm-hmm. over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Listen unto the words of the Lord. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. So right here is letting you know, hey, I remember what Amalek, the Edomites, did unto Israel. When you read back in like Deuteronomy 25 and 17. Read. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek. So... The king received an order, go and kill Amalek. Read. And utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, Mm -hmm. but slay both man and woman, infants and suckling, Mm -hmm. ox and sheep, camel and ass. Destroy everything, all every residue of that nation. Verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amicalites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. See that? So he spared them. So he disobeyed the order. Disobeyed the order that came down from the Most High. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen Mm -hmm. and of the fatlings and of the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. See that thing? Because he was covetous. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Yeah, then let's jump to Numbers 24 and 18. Twenty-four verse 18. The book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 18. And Edom shall be a possession. Sire also shall be a possession for oh, his enemies. Hold, hold on, hold on. It said what? Edom shall be a possession. And, and Edom shall be a possession. 
Verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. Christ. I shall behold him, but not nigh. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall come a star out of Jacob. Christ. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. That's Christ. And shall smite the corners of Moab. Moab is the so-called Chinese. They're getting smitten by Christ. Yep. Read. And destroy all the children of Sheth. Seth, meaning the, e the Ethiopians. Read. And Edom shall be a possession. And Esau going into captivity. Also shall, Sair shall also be a possession mm -hmm. for his enemies. And Israel shall do val valiant. Because we're going to have a kingdom. We're going to be in rulership. That's what that's talking about. Read. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, mm -hmm. and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Read on. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of these nations, but his latter, and shall be that he perish forever. See that? His latter end is he's being killed off, perished forever, wiped out. So even though at during the time in Samuel, that was the order that was put out. The most I said, oh, no, you, that's still going to be your judgment. He didn't obey, but that's still going to be your judgment. All right, let's get um, the book, The Roman, Roman Empire. Em the Roman Empire of the Edomites by William Beeston, mm -hmm. 1853. And the Roman Empire, then the Roman Empire at, at length entirely overturned the Jewish state. The second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian and professing the religion of Jesus Christ, which they were the first of all nations to embrace. They hold Jacob in captivity. So that that part that you just read is talking about they were the first ones to adopt over to our religion. Right. That's, the Romans. What, it's, that's what it's talking about in Numbers chapter 20. Read Numbers chapter 20 again real quick. So why I said they the first nation. Hold that. Read that. Hey, and remember, remember, we, we already went to the definition earlier about how Herod, which was an Idumean Roman ruler, he was a convert, which is also one of uh, the, the Khazars. He's a part of the Khazars. All of your fake Jews now, they Herodians. The book of Numbers, chapter 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations. Now go read that, what you just read. Which they were the first of all nations to embrace. Right. They was the first nation to embrace Judaism. We read that uh, from John High Cranus all the way on down to Herod. That's, his, that's prophecy, man. They hold Jacob in captivity till Messiah ben David shall appear. You see hey, that that was in Numbers 24, too. <laughs> Talk about when Christ come back. And it said they hold them in captivity. So now, remember, when, they, when you do the research, they say, wait a minute. The so-called Jewish people, or Amalek, funded and promoted the slave trade. They said, most definitely, yeah, well, these Negroes got to go into captivity. The rabbins further assert, rabbis further assert, that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau, Edom, and the cities of Edom have as yet received but a partial accomplishment, and that they will obtain their fulfillment in the punishment and destruction of of Rome Christian. So in other words, they're going to be put to death when Christ comes back. That's what that. That's what their scholars are saying. That's right. not what we're saying. That's what we just read in Numbers 24, how they was the first nation they're going to be utterly destroyed forever. He, that was just paraphrasing Numbers 24 and 20. The book of From the Maccabees to Mishma by Shai J.D. Cohen. Paragraph 3. Roman rule over the Jews continued until the Parthian and Arab conquests of the 6th and 7th centuries CE, by the time, by which time, the Roman Empire had become Christian and Byzantine. Mm. Yet the centuries after the destruction of the temple often received the name the Rabbinic Period. So that's, that's just another history book showing you that they converted and took over just what we just read, the prophecies that we just read out of the Bible and out of the other book over there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. You see that? This is saying it again. Read. 
when you were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, mm -hmm. even all that were feeble behind thee. Damn. When thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. You see that thing? There was, he was plucking us off. And they said, he feared not God. He's like, oh, this is the time to get at him. Because remember, when you read in the beginning, in Genesis 25, Esau had a perpetual hatred. Perpetual. Even to this day, when you look throughout history, you always see Edomites, the so-called white man, attacking Jacob. It's constant. That's why our people out here saying, well, we got to do something to change this. It's not going to change the Christ's return. Hey, you know what's funny, officer? You know how it's perpetual? It'd be 90, 100-year-old white people that don't remember their daughters, but they remember that they hate black people, though. Yeah. Yep. Nigga. Because yep. it's inbred in them. Let's get, this, uh, let's get this next book. The book of Psalm? No, no, no. Get uh, the book. Yeah, View of the Hebrews. 32, page 32 and 33. View of the Hebrews, page 32, lest any should say, the prediction which here seems to foretell the restoration of the ten tribes, as well as that of the Jews, were accomplished in the restoration of the few Israelites, of that few of the Israelites, who claved to the Jews under the house of David. And the ten tribes were irrecoverably lost. It is here expressed that the Jews and those Israelites, their companions, were symbolized by one stick and Ephraim. All the house of Israel, the whole ten tribes, by the other stick. These sticks miraculously became one in the prophet's hand, which thus explained, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel, their general ancient name, including the twelve tribes, from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, Upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. Can a doubt, can a doubt here rest on the subject whether the Jews and the ten tribes shall be reestablished in Palestine? Can such divine testimony as this be done away? But similar testimonies to the point are numerous in the prophets. This passage has never yet received a primary or partial fulfillment. The whole of it remains to be fulfilled. You see that? Even the historians know that the thing hasn't been fulfilled yet. Even, even, even though they up, up in the land, they said, no, nah, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Hey, look, hey, look that was written before the fake Jews got over there. Right. But they told you in that book, because that book is written, when, what's the year on it? 1825. That's yep. letting you know that the two tribes got to be back in the land with Christ. Right. That's what that historian said right there. Yeah, let's close out this last verse. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11. The book of Ezekiel, Sorry. chapter 11 and verse 14. Yep. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel holy, holy, are unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get ye far from the Lord, unto us is the land given in possession. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, uh -huh. and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Meaning schools will pop up in all the lands they were in captivity. Read. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people. Uh-huh. So he's going to gather us. Read. And assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. Say, he said, I will give you the land of not Israel. Not the League of Nations. Not the League of Nations. Look, not the, Na the League of Nations that destroyed us to begin with. Right. Damn. So with that, we're going to say shalom, fam. Shalom, 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 We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.